intercession for the saints, don't miss those last words, according to the will of God. Prayer is based on the will of God. Today, God's will is that all men are saved and come into a knowledge of the truth. And the will of God is in the word of God. And the word of God to us today is through the Apostle Paul and his 13 epistles. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It doesn't mean that you can't read Genesis to, to Malachi or Hebrews to Revelation in the future. No, learn from those books. But don't apply verses in those books to you because I can guarantee you they won't work. Try it. Try it tonight. Go to, go to Hebrews or 1 John or go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John or maybe Genesis or Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Take a verse. With all your heart, believe on that verse as if God is talking to you. And then call me and let me know what happened. It won't work. Why? Go with me to Philippians. The book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Here's our Apostle Paul laying out the issue of prayer today in the dispensation of grace. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to see how God deals with us in prayer today. Philippians chapter 4. Now we saw that the reason people get old and sick and die because of Adam's sin and that that's part of what's going on today. That's why when you pray for your healing and you don't get it, don't be mad at God. And you say, well, God, like I did, God, that's what it said in Matthew. You've got to do it. Understand who he was speaking to there. And understand the Apostle Paul in his 13 epistles is showing you how, how God does his thing today. Philippians chapter 4. Uh, look at verse 6. Philippians 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. That, means when you, that don't mean when you cross the street, don't look both ways. He's saying, don't be full of care. You remember when the, the Lord was in the house and Lazarus' sister Mary and Martha was there? Mary was at his feet and Martha was busy serving and she got mad because her sister. And he says, Mary, he says Martha, you, 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 you're cumbered about with many things. Chill out. That's what he was saying. Don't be full of care. If you're full of care today, I, I got the answer. It's Christ. Christ is the answer. You need to trust him as your savior, that he died for your sins. You need to get into the word of God through, in Paul's epistles specifically, but in general, the Word of God, and find out what God is doing. Guess what? Watch what happened. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, in everything, by prayer. Remember what prayer is? Pouring out your heart to God. And supplication, that's, that's, that's going to God and, and, and saying, God, this is what I need. You, you, can, you can be specific, but look, with thanksgiving, thanking him. Now, you're thanking him before he even answered the prayer. See that? Let your request be made known unto God. God is not saying, don't come to me and pray. He says, come, pray. But look at the answer. He says in verse 7, and the God will give you all the money that you ask for. He'd pay all your bills. He'd give you that healing. He'd save your husband, your sister, your mother. No. He says in verse 7, and the peace of God. Think about that, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. You see that? When you pray today as a member of the church, the body of Christ, and the dispensation of grace, God doesn't promise to answer every prayer specifically. Now, he's going to answer, by the way. He's going to answer. He hears you. But he may not answer it the way you think he should. Because if he did, it will be messed up. Because if, it was, if, if, if he did it the way you want him to do it, believe me, you'll mess it up. Because you're, you're a sinner. But what he says is the peace of God. And this is a prayer promise that you can take and say, God, I'm going to depend on it, and, and I'm, I'm going to take you on your word. And every time that I've prayed and gave it to God, I poured out my heart to the Lord, guess what? I got the peace of God which passed all understanding, and he kept my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. That's prayer today, okay? Paul says when you pray, and then you look for the answer. But don't be saddened. Don't be mad at God. Don't be frustrated. Don't give up on God just because he doesn't answer it the way you want. It has nothing to do with your faith. It doesn't mean that you don't have faith. It doesn't mean there's unconfessed sin. Like I said, everybody's a sinner on this planet. It means that you're probably in some prayer verses that ain't for you. In Israel's program, they made a covenant with God, so if they did things the right way, he'd bless them. 
But let me tell you something else about Israel. If they didn't do the things the right way, he'd curse them. And them curses he put on Israel, you don't want. So don't try to come to God based on what you do, on your performance. Come through the cross. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again. And he, God gave Paul the apostle in Acts 9 the privilege to be a vessel to you as a Gentile. Okay? Now, with the time we have left, before we wrap it up, let's go to Ephesians 3. I just want you to see something. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. The best thing you can do is get in God's word. Well, the best thing you can do, if you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's the best thing you can do. Because in order for you to have a relation with God, remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You need to believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that he died on that cross for your sin, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day. And when you do that, God looks at your heart. He sees you putting your faith in his son, and he saves you that moment. You don't have to walk out. You don't have to pray a prayer. You don't have to get in any water. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Look at that verse, Romans 4, 5. Paul is saying, when you don't work today, and believe Christ will save you. Well, to finish off, let's finish off in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Is that what I said? Ephesians 3. Look at verse 14. Ephesians 3, 14. Another thing about prayer. Paul says, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, when Paul says that he was a Jew, that's how they prayed. So he's using this as a, a, a symbol of the submission you give to God. You don't have to get on your knees and pray today. Believe me, God can hear you. I could stand here and pray, and God will answer the prayer just as well as I got on my face before him. Paul is using that as a, as a, as a figure of speech to show that prayer is just you and God. Humble yourself before him in prayer. He says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. By the way, that verse shows his two programs. God's program with the earth through the nation Israel. God's program with the heavens through the body of Christ. Now look what Paul says in verse 16. If you want to know what the prayer of our apostle is for you, then here it is. That God, verse 16, would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Look at that. In the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now look at verse 20. I love this. These are greater prayer promises than what Israel had. Verse 20 of Ephesians 3. Now unto him, unto God, that is able to do exceeding, abundant, above all that we ask or think. You can't even think high enough for God to bless you, okay? He said be beyond what you can ask or even think, according to the power that worketh in us. It's the Spirit of Almighty God taking the Word of God. The, the Spirit of God in your Bible never works without the Word of God. Check it from Genesis to Revelation. I guarantee you, you never see the Spirit of God working without the Word. As you take the word of God in, rightly divided, and you allow the spirit of God to work that, it becomes the life of Christ living out through you. He says he'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or even think, according to the power that worketh in us. My friend, God is, he's not a genie in the sky where you can just pray to him and he, you say the right thing and he give you what you want. He's not a vending machine. He's a heavenly father that loves you and gave his son for you. And if you trust that and that alone, God will give you eternal life right now. And you'll have a relationship where you can pour out your heart to him. Okay? And when you do that, you become what, what Paul says, a saint. You become set aside to God. And then get into God's word. 
rightly divide God's word. I, I suggest you read, the first book you read is the book of Romans. That's the first book the Apostle Paul wrote in your Bible, the way they set it up chronologically. Read the book of Romans 10, 15 times. Get it, get it in you. See what God has done for you, and then go on to read through Paul's epistles. Because Paul is the apostle of grace. Israel was under the law. Paul brought grace. Now, the things that I'm saying today, you probably never heard it before, but I guarantee you, everything I said is in your Bible that you have right there on your lap. Check it out for yourself. So before we go, I just want to say a prayer for those that are, that are listening. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your precious word, Father. Father, I know there are some out there who have never heard this before, but my prayer is that they don't take my word, that they look in their own scriptures, get their own Bible. Look at these verses. When, when we put them up there, let them look at them, Father. And then between you and them, let them be honest with the scriptures. Then they'll know, Father, that what we speak here today is your word. They don't have to take a man's viewpoint. They don't have to just take what their pastor says or what their elder says or what their mother or father, what their church, what their doctrine. I understand. I understand how hard it is to go against the grain. But, Father, let them understand that it's your word that is the key. It is for them that I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Well, we're going to wrap up God's word for today. Until next time, Maranatha, which means our Lord cometh. Amen.